On this video we're taking a look at our MLB team and total picks for the games that are happening on Saturday, April 30th, 2022. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Five plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 500 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting picks that ends up costing you a lot of money. Join the high stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Miami Marlins vs Seattle Mariners. Miami Marlins plus 1.5 and here is why. The Miami Marlins will try to build on their victory over the Mariners from Friday's matchup. Jesus Sanchez has a team-high 20 hits along with a pair of triples, three home runs and a .286 batting average. Jazz Chisholm Jr. has three triples as well as four home runs and a team-high 15 RBIs as well this season. Jorge Soler has four doubles, while Joey Wendell has a team-high five doubles and a .333 batting average. Gary Cooper and Brian Anderson each have four doubles as well on the year. Seattle is 7-3 in their last 10 games overall and 11-5 in their last 16 games against a team with a winning record, while the over is 5-1 in their last 6 games against a team with a left-handed starter. Miami is 5-1 in their last 6 games against the Al West and 0-6 in their last 6 interleague games against a left-handed starter, while the under is 7-2 in their last 9 games overall. The Mariners are coming into this game after struggling against the Tampa Bay Rays. Their offense stayed silent in the final two games of that series and they will be looking for their bats to wake up against the Marlins. The Mariners are currently scoring 4.63 runs per game and hitting .235 as a team. This is the seventh most runs scored per game and the 12th highest overall team batting average. As long as the Mariners are making contact and getting on base, they will always be in the game. Seattle is also averaging 1.07 home runs per game, which is the eighth most in the MLB. They can change the game with one swing of the bat, as they have power littered throughout their entire batting order. I would also expect the Mariners to stay extremely aggressive once they have reached base safely. They have already stolen 13 bases this season, which is the fourth most in the league. They do everything they can to score and they have shown that they are one of the top offenses in the MLB. Watch for Ty France at the plate in this one. He has already hit five home runs and also leads the team with a .365 batting average. France is producing a fence out of thin air for the Mariners right now. The Miami Marlins started the season slower than they would have liked, but they have been playing better as of late. Miami is currently scoring 3.83 runs per game and hitting .232 as a team. This is the 18th least amount of runs scored per game and the 15th lowest overall team batting average. The Marlins have also stolen the fourth most bases this season, as they also know that they need to move their base runners into scoring position as quickly as they can. The Marlins have struggled on this side of the field, and they will need their bats to wake up if they want to hang with the Mariners in this series. I would watch for Jazz Chisholm at the plate in this game. He has already hit four home runs this season, which leads his team. I will be riding with the home team in this matchup. The Marlins have now won six out of their last seven games and they have it rolling on both sides of the field. Their pitching and defense are good enough to slow down this Mariners offense. Miami is giving up the seventh least amount of runs per game and has already recorded seven quality starts. Their starting pitching has been solid for the last two weeks and Jesus Lizardo has what it takes to take down the opposing hitters. He has a 3.77 ERA and 23 strikeouts in 14.1 innings pitched. He has the ability to strike out anyone he wants as long as he is controlling his pitches. The Mariners also struggled at the plate in their last series against the Tampa Bay Rays. This trend will continue and their bats will remain cold. Miami is hitting .232 as a team, which is the 15th highest overall team batting average. They will be able to score multiple runs in this game and keep the spread within, plus 1.5. The Mariners are cold on the offensive side of the field and they will struggle in this game against Jesus Lizardo. On the other hand, Miami is one of the hottest teams in the league and they will be looking to keep stringing together wins. Our second pick is under 7.5 runs. And here is why. On the defensive side of the field, the Marlins have been better this season. Their strengths begin on the defensive side of the field, as they are one of the best defensive teams in the league. They are allowing 3.06 runs per game and have a combined team whip rating of 1.15. This is one of the lowest combined ratings in the league, as the Marlins starters have done a great job of keeping their opponents off the base paths. The Marlins have also already recorded seven quality starts, which is the sixth most in the MLB. They aren't having to rely on their bullpen, and it is freeing up the rest of their pitching staff. 
everyone is still well rested and their pitching is the strongest part of their team right now. The only thing that the Marlins must eliminate on the defensive side of the field is their errors. They have already committed 12 errors in the field this season, which is the 21st most. Solid teams will begin to capitalize on these mistakes if they aren't careful. According to MLB.com, Jesus Luzardo will be getting the start on the mound for the Marlins. He has gone 1-1 this season with a 3.77 ERA. He also has a 1.26 whip rating with only 14.1 innings pitched. He hasn't spent a ton of time on the field this season, but he has still gotten the job done when the Marlins have called his name. He has also already struck out 23 batters in this short period of action. On the defensive side of the field, the Mariners have also been getting the job done. They are currently allowing 3.00 runs per game and have a combined team whip rating of 1.17. This is the 10th highest whip rating in the league as there aren't many more teams that have been playing as well as the Mariners on this side of the field. They have also already recorded 8 quality starts, which is the 4th most in the MLB. They are allowing their starting pitchers to get very deep into these games as they aren't putting the ball in their bullpen's hands early on in these games. Seattle has also been decent in the field as they have already committed 11 fielding errors this season. This is the 18th most errors committed as the Mariners have to clean up their fielding issues if they want to start stringing together wins. According to Tomble.com, Robbie Ray will be getting the start in this game. He has gone 2-1 to start this new season and also has a 3.41 ERA. He has pitched for 25.1 innings and has already struck out 18 batters. He has the punch-out ability and I would expect him to be very aggressive on the mound in this game. Southpaw Robbie Ray take the hill for the Mariners on Saturday. Ray is 2-1 on the season with a 3.91 ERA in 4 starts. He has 18 strikeouts and 8 walks in 25.1 innings of work. In his last start, Ray gave up 2 runs on 5 hits in 6 innings with 5 strikeouts and a 5-4 extra innings win over the Royals. Ray got a no decision. Ray was 2-0 with an ERA of 1.50 and 15 strikeouts in 2 appearances versus the Marlins last season. In his career versus Miami, he is 4-3 with an ERA of 2.12 and 58 strikeouts in 9 appearances. The Miami Marlins are red hot. They have won 6 straight to improve to 11-8. They are second in the NL East, 3 games behind the Mets. In Friday's 8-6 win over Seattle, Elisa Hernandez allowed three runs in five innings to get the win. Miguel Rojas and Jesus Aguilar each had two hits to lead Miami. Rojas had a homer and two RBIs, while Jorge Soler also had a home run and two RBIs. Pittsburgh Pirates vs San Diego Padres. Our first pick is Padres minus 1.5 and here is why. San Diego didn't have a ton of trouble with the Reds this week, winning 9-6, 8-5 and 7-5 for a three-game sweep. On Friday vs. Pittsburgh, the Padres scored in four different innings on the way to a 7-3 win. Yu Darvish put up 6.0 innings with three earned on eight hits and a walk in the start. Starter for the Padres on Saturday will be Sean Mania. In four starts so far this year Mania is 2-2 with a 3.47 ERA. Over 23.1 innings he has a total of 16 hits, 9 earned, 8 walks and 24 strikeouts. Mania carries a 3.85 career ERA with a 52-43 record. The Padres keep finding ways to win despite not fielding their best lineup on a day-to-day -day basis. All-star SS Fernando Tatis Jr. has been out all year after an offseason wrist injury, and they've placed two starting pitchers, Blake Snell and Mike Clevenger, on the 10-day Illinois in recent days. First baseman Luke Voigt, who the Padres hope to fill a power-hitting void in their lineup, was placed on the 10-day Illinois on April 23 with biceps issues and has yet to hit a home run this season. Despite this, the Padres are amongst the better teams in the NL, with the second-most wins in the league. 3B Manny Machado has started strong, and 1B Eric Hosmer continues to defy his critics by hitting .415 out of the gates. On Friday night, Yu Darvish picked up his second win of the series, and the Padres got their fourth straight win and ninth in 11 games. Darvish improved to 2-1 on the season after allowing three runs and eight hits while striking out five and walking one in the 7-3 win. Darvish was supported by the long ball as Ha Seong Kim and Jake Cronworth both connected for home runs in the win. Taylor Rogers went 1.2 innings to pick up his eighth save of the season. Pittsburgh has hit a rough patch thanks to getting swept by NL Central Power Milwaukee this week. The Brewers' stellar staff shut down the Pirates' bats save for one game in which the Pirates scored eight runs. Runs, in general, have been hard to come by for the Pirates, and the team is 0-5 this season when the opponent has scored at least five runs. Outfielder Brian Reynolds, who signed a long-term deal just as the season got underway, has struggled at the plate so far this season. Reynolds is hitting just .197 and has but three RBI so far this season. 
On Friday night, the Pirates pitching couldn't stand up to the Padres' bats. Starting pitcher Zach Thompson fell to 0-3 after giving up four runs in just 3.1 innings of work. Daniel Vogelbach had two hits and two RBI for the Pirates, who now are sitting on a four-game losing streak. I'm going to stay with San Diego here. Mania is going to need a bounce back start, though. In his last outing versus the Dodgers, Mania put up 4.1 innings with six earned on six hits and three walks and a loss. In the Friday opener, the Padres had a pretty solid all-around game, despite a slow couple of innings at the beginning. Mania might have the best overall stuff on the staff, but hasn't quite showcased it fully since his seven-inning no-hit performance in the opener. The Pirates' rather weak lineup may be tailor-made for another similar performance from the talented left-hander. Brubaker has not gone deep into games this season at all, and I fully expect that trend to continue in this game. I like the Padres to piece together enough runs to win this game rather comfortably, even if they don't score over five runs. Mania should have his way with a weak hitting Pirates and has the capability to pitch deeper into games, certainly more so than Brubaker. Our second pick is over seven. And here is why. At the moment, the Pirates lineup has too many batters that can be pitched to, and that has kept the Bucks from putting together too many big innings. Pittsburgh is 17th in batting average, 22nd in runs scored and 23rd in slugging percentage. These numbers make it rather obvious as to why the Pirates do not fare well against teams that can score in bunches. Brubaker will make his fifth start on Saturday, and, despite his 0-2 record, the Pirates are 2-2 in his start so far this season. Brubaker has not been able to get deep into games this season, with his innings high being just five thus far. In his last start, Brubaker went three innings, giving up three hits and three runs with two earned. Brubaker was 5-13 as a rookie last season and gave up 28 home runs. He faced the Padres once, pitched five innings with six hits and two runs, and got a no decision. The Padres have had to get production out of unusual places this season. Hosmer's .415 average and 39 total bases remains a surprise, as do the team leading five home runs and 15 RBI out of Jurickson Profer. The Padres are 13th in average this season, but 8th in runs scored as their lineup has been quite opportunistic. On the mound, Saturday night will be Mania, a key pick of this offseason in a trade with Oakland. Mania is 2-2 on the season, and his last start was his first true clunker of the season. He only lasted 4.1 innings, his shortest outing of the season, and gave up seven runs, six earned. Mania served up two home runs and walked three batters against the Dodgers' powerful lineup. Prior to that, he had pitched 19 innings in his first three starts, while giving up just 10 hits. He should have an easier lineup to work against when he squares off against the Pirates. Sean Mania has been a decent pitcher, but nowhere near an A so far this year, according to his baseball saving page. So far this season, he is in the 91st percentile chase rate, 69th percentile in hard hit percentage, 64th percentile in strikeout percentage, and 56th percentile in SPA. Mania is currently throwing three different pitches, sinker, chanjup, curveball, and his sinker has been doing extremely well so far as hitters are 6 for 48 against it, with a pair of homers and 14 strikeouts. This will be his first career pitching appearance against the Pirates in his career, so this will be an interesting matchup. JT Brubaker has done pretty well to begin the 2022 campaign when looking at his baseball saving page, as he is currently in the 75th percentile in barrel percentage, 71st percentile in whiff percentage, 66th percentile in spa, and 54th percentile in strikeout percentage this season. He has a five-pitch arsenal, sinker, slider, curveball, fastball, chanjup, and his sinker has been his best pitch thus far, as hitters have a .125 batting average, 3 for 24, with a homer and eight strikeouts. He faced the Padres once in his career as he did not factor into the decision as he went five innings and allowed two runs on six hits with three walks and seven strikeouts. Texas Rangers vs Atlanta Braves. Our first pick is Atlanta Braves to win. And here is why. After a slow start to their 2022 campaign, Atlanta is finally beginning to round into form. The return of Ronald Acuna this week was a major step in the right direction, as the Braves lineup finally returned to full strength. Thus far Atlanta has ranged toward the middle of the pack, scoring just over four runs per game, 17th. The Braves also rank 13th in team batting average up to this point. Third baseman Austin Riley has gotten off to a fast start. After launching his sixth home run of the season on Friday night, he now has a season-long ops of .973. We will see if he can keep it going in this contest. The Atlanta Braves have to be a bit disappointed after failing to sweep their first series of the season, although they were close. Following a 3-1 home win over the Chicago Cubs, they fell short in the extra inning in Game 2, but responded with a 5-1 win to win the series 2-1 their first series win of the campaign. 
Still, the Braves are far from the last season's form when they won the World Series. Atlanta improved to a 9-11 record. Kyle Wright, 3-0, displayed another dominant performance in his fourth start of the year and recorded the third win. He pitched for 7.0 innings and allowed just one run on three hits with 8K and 4 BB. Ronald Acuna Jr. returned to the field for the first time since the mid-July of 2021 and finished the game with one for five and two stolen bases. Austin Riley and Dansby Swanson hit solo homers, while Adam Duval added two RBI with his home run in the eighth inning to secure Atlanta's victory. Nothing has gone right for Texas at the start of the 2022 season, as the ball club has not been able to sustain any positive momentum to this point. After beginning the season 2-9 there were brief signs they were starting to get on track with a nice 4-1 stretch, but they have now followed that up by losing four in a row. Pitching has been a disaster for Texas so far as they enter Saturday ranked 27th in the league, with a team ERA hovering around 5.00. Dane Dunning gets the ball coming off a decent showing against Houston, pitching 5.2 innings while allowing two runs and five hits while earning a no decision. On the season, he is 0-1 with a 4.79 ERA. The Texas Rangers won the opening game of the series against the Houston Astros at home but lost the next three, including the most recent 1-3-2. Still, the Rangers showed some improvement in the last 7-10 days after starting the season with a miserable 2-9 record and now are looking for a better result in the series against Atlanta. Martin Perez, 0-2, had a strong showing in 7.0 innings against Houston, allowing only one run on two hits with 4K and no walks. The result was 1-1 while he and Justin Verlander pitched, but already in the eighth, Matt Bush allowed a two-run homer to Kyle Tucker and took a loss in the end. Corey Seager homered in the ninth, but it wasn't enough to avoid a narrow 3-2 defeat. Texas did improve recently and won four of the last eight after a weak start of the year. However, they are still not hitting the ball well enough against the right-handed pitchers, 0.206, and are scoring 3.52 runs against righties. That is not enough to beat the Braves, who are now stronger for Ronald Acuna Jr., but the Rangers will get their chance because they are batting against a rookie starter elder. It's their only hope in this one, in my opinion. Still, I am backing the visitors to get a win, although I don't think it will be an easy one. And our second pick is. Under 8.5 runs. And here is why. The Atlanta Braves will look to build on their 6-3 win over the Texas Rangers from Friday. Matt Olson has a team-high 24 hits with a .308 batting average and a team-high 9 doubles, while Marcel Izuna has 22 hits with 5 doubles, 4 home runs and 10 RBIs. Austin Riley has 20 hits with 7 doubles, 6 home runs and a team-high 12 RBIs, and Ozzy Albies has a team-high 6 home runs and 11 RBIs. Bryce Elder will start here and is 1-2 with a 4.30 ERA and 11 strikeouts this season. I get the reasoning for backing either team here, but I'm giving a strong look at the under here. This is a pitcher's part to begin with, and while both teams have been slow starters out of the gate, it doesn't help either side here that both teams are trotting out a right-handed starter for this game, as both have struggled against righties this season. I think this is a first to four wins kind of game, so give me the under here. Disclaimer, no financial advice, the information on this channel is provided for education and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information contained in or provided from or through this channel is not intended to be and does not constitute financial advice, investment advice, trading advice or any other advice. The information on this channel and provided from or through this channel is general in nature and is not specific to you the user or anyone else. You should not make any decision, financial, investment, trading or otherwise, based on any of the information presented on this channel without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or financial advisory.